I'm Blaine Chocolate and I'm here today to talk to you about a new product from Flyman Fishing Company. It's uh, this new faux bucktail. Um, it's, a, it's a synthetic tapered uh, bucktail imitation that you can do quite a few things uh, that a regular bucktail will do. But uh, you'll have to do it a little bit differently than you would with a traditional bucktail. Like uh, being that this fiber is not hollow, it will not flare like normal bucktail will, but you can get around that by using different techniques. And that's what I'm going to talk to you about today. Uh, this is a finished fly that I did for Flyman to, to kind of show how this material works. Uh, and, I, and I incorporated several techniques in this particular fly. If you look inside right here, um, I did a traditional Bob Popovic's hollow style in the back. So you can reverse tie this stuff quite, quite easily. Um, it is, being that it's a synthetic, and a lot of synthetics are slick. Um, so you'd have to really be careful on how you build your tapers uh, with your thread wraps in front of the, the reverse tie or hollow style of tying. Um, but if you make a nice thread taper and start getting, the, 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 I guess, the correct height that you're going to be looking for um, and take your time with it, it works quite well. Um, Another way that you can achieve uh, this hollow style look is by using the body tubing that uh, is also available through um, Flyman Fishing Company and Hairline. So um, I want to show you a couple of these techniques and then when I pull this back you can see how it gives you that really nice full body. Um, this fly has been wet. Uh, I tested it yesterday and it, it um, it, it, it holds its shape well. Um, it sheds water really quickly. Um, there's a, so there are a lot of positives to this material. Um, till recent, till now, um, you really haven't had a, a, a synthetic bucktail imitation available that has taper. Um, so there are endless possibilities with this product. One, not only throwing and tying streamers, but you also will be able to use this to wrap bodies for midges bodies for nymphs of different types. You could use it for ribbing. Um, you can also use it for antenna. You'll be able to use it for, for legs or even tails for mayflies, stuff like that. So without further ado, we'll get started. What I want to start with today is uh, showing you how to work with this uh, faux bucktail. Um, as I talked about earlier, um, this, this material is a synthetic version of natural bucktail. It's the difference is, is it's not hollow, um, but the positive side is it's going to be able to hold up to toothy critters uh, better. It's, uh, it's also going to be one length, uh, a little over six inches long, and uh, as you can see it's all the same length. So the first thing I want to show you is how you would taper it um, to get that natural look versus having all the ends being the same. Uh, so what you're going to do, just like with a lot of synthetics, after you cut it off of the, the stalk at the base or you could just pick it off. Uh, you're just going to take the tips and start pulling on them to kind of get an uneven nice taper. So if we were to tie a clouser minnow um, this is how, or any type of bait fish that you want taper this is how you would achieve it before you would tie it in. So that out of the way I want to show you how you would do um, a Bob Popovic's hollow style. Um, the one thing you're going to notice that you can't do with this material is flare it. But there's ways around that if you want to get flare and bulk. Um, you're still going to be able to reverse tie this and you'll be able to achieve that by creating a nice cone to the front. And the cone is going to be crucial because this material, much like bucktail, is slick. But it's going to be quite a bit more slick than your natural bucktail. So we're going to go ahead and I trim this butt sections. We're going to go ahead and attach this to the shank here just like you normally would uh, with natural deer body hair or bucktail. So I want to evenly get this around this, this shank here. Um, so I'm just going to kind of work it around with my fingers, work it back and forth, loose wraps and then tighten, loose wraps and then tighten. And then I feel like we're going to have this pretty much all the way around the shank here and if it's not you can loosen it and still work it back and forth. So as you see and I pull down here you see that it is not um, 
starting to flare like normal bucktail, and that's fine. Once you have it tied in, you're just going to make a, a, several secure wraps. This is one technique, several secure wraps so the fibers can't be pulled out. And at this point, um, I'm going to take a pin or, or whatever you like to use to, uh, to achieve your, your reverse tie here. I'm trying to keep these fibers from getting inside. So you can come back and push this back. You can also use smaller, uh, I guess, pin heads or whatever if you don't want to use a, a larger one like this. If you want to kind of keep things a little more clean. Uh, for the, I'm not going to tie a fly out of this. I just want to show you a technique, one technique. So now that I have it kind of all the way around, evenly like so, you're just going to bring your thread through it just like Bob's way um, and just start building a nice thread taper forward and then you're, you'll be able to adjust your height of the reverse tie by doing this. But again, this, this material is not going to flare so if you come back on to the material with, with the thread and, and tighten down it's just going to collapse. So we're not going to come back onto the, the hair. We're going to keep the thread in front of it and use the thread wraps to push it back and not onto it. So by pushing it back, it's going to start closing up. But if we were to tie it down onto it, it's not going to flare like regular bucktail will. So I, I'm going to grab this material again, hold it in place, and start working back towards it and come forward. You don't want to create too much of a, a steep taper because the thread will collapse on itself. So come back and forth and build it as you go. It takes a little while to get used to doing this but uh, those that have already done it for years will not have any problem with this. The, the cool thing about this material I've found is how durable it is and right there you can see how it's already started to achieve that hollow. So if you wanted a smaller taper or a smaller uh, type bait fish you would just keep wrapping back towards it and that would make the material start to come back and close up. But if that's the way you want to achieve it and working forward to create that height that you want you would just kind of back off the thread wraps just like so. So I'm going to leave that like that is. I mean you can yeah, you can see here that you could keep wrapping back to close that down if you like. But the key is creating a nice cone up front. And then what you can also do to secure this is just add some UV or blue light, blue uh, resin here, or UV, whichever you prefer. So once that hits, it's going to have to secure those thread wraps so it's not going to collapse. And I like to do that with this type of technique, especially for me because I fish a lot of muskie, obviously, and um, if they can get to your teeth, uh, their teeth towards the thread, it's going to tear up faster. And that's one of the major advantages of using this synthetic bucktail is it will be able to hold up to uh, teeth a little bit better than natural bucktail will. Um, I personally have not tried it yet on, on uh, bluefish or anything like that, um, but I did take it up to Saskatchewan this past summer and did catch some fish, uh, some northern pike on it and it held up fine. So, but that's the way you would do a traditional hollow style and if I turn this and point it at you. You'll see the uh, you'll see that taper, that cone taper on the coming forward. And if I turn it this way, you can see the inside and how how hollow that is, and, and how big of a diameter that I've created. Okay, so that's one way of doing it. Another way of doing it, and I'm going to come forward on here, is you could take uh, if you want to create and have more um, of the butt sections into. In, incorporate that into the pattern like you do with the regular bucktail you can what you'd have to do to achieve that is create some kind of a dam and I'm, I'm using my game changer chenille for this but you can use whatever material you may have handy and I'm just gonna build a kind of like a ball again I'm not trying to create any pattern specifically we're just doing techniques here so w once I have that ball shape I'm just gonna tie that off And this is all going to be covered up, so I'm not going. To, I'm not really worried about how clean it looks here. So, so I have a nice little support system. So what what you want to do is you want to come up 
in front of this uh, bait, right here at the base, you want to come up roughly an eighth of an inch, and you're going to build a thread dam. And this will give you a place, because being that this material, one of the downfalls to this material, and I wouldn't call it downfall, it's just one of the characteristics of this material, is that it is slick. So to, there's a couple things you can do here. By building a, a thread dam, you're creating a little valley. So when you do wrap down on these fibers, it, you're, it's not going to want to slide forward on you. It's going to keep it in that position. So that's one way of getting around that. Uh, another one is that'll help you is to spin your thread up, which will give it a lot more um, texture, which will help grab the fibers better too. So I'm going to select a, a couple more fibers here. Right, again, uh, the way I like to do this to create taper is to pick it out as you go and you take your time here and you can adjust this however you like. Uh, and you may not want to have taper. If you don't want to have taper, then you don't have to have it. But this is showing you one technique here. Okay, so I trim the butts even and then I'm going to kind of hold those butts over top of that, that dam I created. And by doing that, see, the thread's not wanting to slide forward here. It's staying in one spot. That's, that's one way of doing it. And then I'll take my thumbnail and help these fibers around by loosening and tightening the thread wraps as I go. And next thing you know, you have that kind of back section that creates a little bit of lift, kind of like you get that flare with bucktail. This is how you achieve that. Um, so as you can see now, I have a nice little flare back here. Um, which will help kind of build into your fly if you'd like to do it that style. Um, but if you're, I guess, more of Bob Popovic's hollow style, he trims all this stuff off anyway, so um, it's not necessary to have that. It's just for those that to like to incorporate that extra bulk into their pattern um, to divert water, that's one way of doing it. Okay, And then I would obviously come forward at this point once it's all the way around. And just like I said, you can just kind of play with it to get the fibers to, to roll around the hook evenly. And once you have that, which looks like we're getting close to that right now. Let's see. All right, now I'll pull down tight on these fibers so it can't slip out. Once you have it, you know, kind of evenly distributed around the hook, again, you can take your, your uh, pin or whatever you like to use to to kind of reverse this stuff back over itself evenly. And once you have it there, once that's all the way around, pull these fibers back. Weave your thread in front, start building that tape, that cone. Think of it kind of like a pencil, the front of a pencil. You know, a, a, a perfectly sharpened pencil where you have that nice wood tapering down to the lead. That's kind of the look that you're looking for for this kind of technique. Work it back and forth to get it where you want. Some of the characteristics to the bucktail, um, uh, natural bucktail versus this uh, imitation bucktail, the faux bucktail, um, is one, natural bucktail has a, has a buoyancy property, um, which can be an advantage and disadvantage at times. Uh, we're going to talk about the, uh, the advantage of the synthetic over the, the natural right here and the fact that the synthetic is going to sink a little faster. And that is a big advantage for those of us that are trying to get a fly deeper quicker. Or So a prime example would be some of these um, tailwater fisheries like uh, say Arkansas or Tennessee or, or even out west where you have fast moving water and you need that fly to get in a certain depth quicker. This would be a better option to bucktail there. Um, another example would be fishing offshore to, on wrecks and trying to get the fly down as fast as you can or fishing uh, springtime and tides and stuff like that where you need to drop the fly faster and we're using heavier sinking lines. This will aid in, in, in that, uh, getting that fly down as fast as you can or as fast as you'd like it to get. Um, the, uh, like I said, the, the disadvantage to this, we're, and, there, and there's, this is not going to be a perfect product for every, every situation. It's, it does not have the buoyancy and it doesn't have the flares, but like I said, um, we can get around the flare by adapting to it. Um, 
it will not flare by just pulling down on the on the on the thread but if you put some dams in there um, you can achieve that that bulk bulkiness that you're looking for like the body tubing which I'm going to do next but as you can see here we've already started creating that height and I'm going to fold this back and uh, and show you how this will look using that that uh, regular I guess dam using whatever you have on hand be a chenille or, or whatnot that's just one technique um, the other technique I'm going to show you will be using my body tubing um, that I used to do the T-bones with. Uh, this stuff works quite well with that. Uh, so, as you can see now, I've got that lift that I'm looking for. Uh, so, if you kind of look at the previous one I did, and now look at this, so I already have that, that height that I'm looking for. And you can train this down by, by wrapping back a little bit more and pushing back on it to have it collapse more. But I, I kind of like how that height is right there. Uh, if you don't like that, you can, like I said, you can keep wrapping until you achieve the, de the desired taper in the fly. And again, I, I like to hit this once I have it where I want it. I'd like to hit this with my a UV or a blue blue uh, resin, blue light resin. And I like to hold this to kind of set it, and it'll hold and set really nicely this way. there so we've achieved a very nice looking profile already by using two different techniques um, the next and final technique I'm going to show you is is using the body tubing um, and this if you're not familiar with this is this, uh, basically a Chinese finger uh, deal um, that it, it'll expand and hold its shape and it's it's a nylon type material so it's fairly rigid and it holds holds up well to teeth it holds up well to a lot of abuse. Um, you can make all types of body shapes with this material. So um, I'll, I'll cut, do a rough cut of about an inch and a half. Cut that off. And part of what you need to do right now is take a lighter and singe the end lightly, just a little bit. So I'm gonna take that singed in and bring it right over top of the shank and then tie that in right here use heavy thread here this happens to be 140 you could use 210 or whatever just to make sure that's locked in nice and tight alright so I'm gonna make sure that this is cut even before I do anything there we go and something I like to do right here is I like to come back and open this up a little bit and what that does is that's gonna because once you hit this with a lighter it melts this stuff together if you melt it too much, uh, you're not able to reverse it like what I'm going to get ready to show you right here. So now that it's open, I can go ahead and reverse it back over itself and then come back forward to create a trumpet horn shape. And then I'm going to retie this in exactly where I tied it in just a little bit earlier. And once that's tied down, we're going to wrap that and then you can whip finish it. All right, and then trim your thread off and then all you're going to do is just reverse it back and this creates a really nice uh, uh, th basically a, um, a spreader dam that's been used for years this is just um, and you can flatten it on the sides to create more of a, a higher taper and a flatter side or you can keep it round to create more of a, a, a cylinder or circular type bait like I said you can flatten it on the sides and that'll make it more of a flat sided type bait or keep it round it's, it's totally up to you so the next step to this, obviously, is to reattach your thread. But I, like I said, with the previous one, I'm going to come up forward about an eighth of an inch and create a thread dam right here. And that's going to keep that. That's just going to. What this does is it fixes your problem that you have with this synthetic material. It, it's going to give you that really nice um, valley where when you tighten down on your thread, it's going to stay there and not want to slide forward. But I, I have a distinct valley now. Um, then I'm going to come back and you can take as little or as much as you want with this with this uh, synthetic bucktail. It's really cool because, I mean, what really makes this versus all the other 
synthetic fibers out there is a really cool taper that you have. I mean, it has a very even, nice taper to the whole deal. So we have roughly, and it's very hard to find consistent bucktail that's five to six inches long. You know, that's the other advantage to this. So again, to create the taper that we want, so I'm just gonna pull at the tips and get all the way through, and then I'll kind of rotate it in my hand, spin it around, get it as natural looking as possible. So now we have a really nice taper here. So I'm gonna find where everything ended back here. And trim it flat. All right, so now all I'm gonna do is just gonna come right here in front, just hold it. We'll make one, two, three loose wraps. And then I'm gonna kind of force it into that valley right there. And then just kind of let it roll right around, back and forth. So I'm just kind of repeating the step we just did. But uh, as you can see here, once it starts to move around into this valley, it's going to really start sliding around. So there we go. We got it really, I think. I think it's all the way around here nicely now. What you can do now is you can come back. You can see how much this is flared now in the back. So you can keep that if you wish, or you can kind of trim it back. Uh, I'm going to trim this. I don't really want it there. And if if you're worried about it slipping out later, again, you can. there's a couple things you can do here. You can use uh, a Loctite style glue, or, or you can even, right here, you can even put a little bit of dab of, a UV resin or a blue light resin kind of secure this back here so there's no slip with the th with the thread wrap at, at all this will lock it down uh, Loctite will do that as well um, and again all we're going to be doing now is we're going to come back with the uh, with a simple pin top and just fold it back force it back and what you'll notice with this that with this type of spreader, you're going to get a much broader profile right off the right off the jump, right off the beginning. Um, uh, so you can you nip, make sure you these fibers are evenly distributed around. And before I do anything here, I kind of want to make sure that's the case. And if you before I do this, I want you to see how that looks. So it's pretty much even all the way around, and that's just from pinching it around with my thumb and working it all the way through. Um, just tighten and loosen, tighten and loosen as you do that. And it, it kind of goes pretty quickly. So again, take that, now that I have it where I want it, take that pin top and push it back. And, and the reason I take my time here is I want to keep it in the center of that opening of the tube. That way it doesn't get, it doesn't push the fibers to one side or the other. It just kind of keeps it even. See that? So now I have a nice even um, distribution of material. And what I did have happen right here, and this is another cool thing that's being used quite a bit in the tying world, is using these UV and blue light resins to kind of set your materials for you. I use it a lot on a bunch of the game changers, uh, especially the the, craft for, the crafty changers and those polar changers that I'm doing now. Um, I'll use, I'll just kind of reverse tie the at the head and uh, set it with a, a, a flexible resin and um, it just kind of gives it a nice shape without having to use thread um, and we can kind of achieve that same thing right here because um, one thing I'm ha having an issue with right here is a short area so so if you as you see this right here the, the, the bucktail the synthetic bucktail straight up and down but if I wanted to set it a little differently I'm going to continue to come forward to the eye and then work back and then keep wrapping. Make sure your thread wraps are even too. That's a, that's crucial when you're doing this. That's one of the things that I have an issue with a lot. Uh, but if you see how it starts setting it back now, we have a, a more of a vertical, slightly turned back taper. And if I wanted to keep doing that. I could, but I can also just do this. I could take uh, my whip finisher and go ahead and tie this off. 
it's just a couple wraps because I'm gonna hit it with a glue real quick. So if I wanna if I wanna go ahead and have this taper a little bit more laid back, take a UV resin here and bring it back onto the fiber. Hold it while you hit it with the light and that will kind of keep it at that angle. And if you hit it again in a minute. So now I have, I've done three different techniques here and I've created a really nice uniform taper moving forward. Um, so that's, you know, without tying a fly, I mean, you're basically, you've achieved three different ways of doing it and they all work, they all end up working well for you. And to, to really secure this for, for the life of the fly, I would uh, go back now that you have the taper that you want and just reapply some more glue. And the more you put it back into the fibers right here, the more you're going to train it to uh, stay in that position. And again, I'm going to hold it back like this because I want it to be a little bit more of a back taper instead of it standing up so much. There we go. So now it's now it's set exactly the way I want and it, it's kind of fallen in line with the taper that I already have. And this is not even, you know, how Bob will tie his hollow style flies and then he'll take them to the to the bathroom and run them under sink under the water and, and to, to form the taper he really wants and we can do that with this as well um, but as you can see going through the water uh, under pressure you're gonna you're gonna that's basically what you're gonna have right there um, you're gonna have a really nice uh, I guess thick body looking fly with not using a lot of material so that that would be the front view of it as you can see here it's pretty universally uh, tied all the way around. It's distributed really well. I feel like maybe a little bit too much on this side, but that's my fault. Um, but now this is looking at the back part. See, you can see all the... So this is going back to Bob's whole theory, um, giving the illusion of bulk and without adding a lot of bulk. And this has been revolutionary in musky design and, and large predatory fly patterns for large toothy critters or just big predators all over the world, whether it be Taiman in Mongolia or Arapaima down in Guyana or Golden Dorado down in Bolivia. You know, these are these flies are becoming more and more popular and this this illusion of mass without having a lot of bulk in there so we were able to cast them. And the advantage to this is it will not hold any water because it's obviously a nylon type of material. So it's going to shed it all immediately. So that's another advantage.